Hi, I'm Phil from Sound United, and we get asked a lot about new surround sound formats. And one of them, of course, is IMAX Enhanced. Um, my, my role at Sound United is the training manager, the guy that has to go out and ask all the engineers and the studios about these particular technologies so I can share that information with you and with salespeople that actually come into stores. So um, I've been spending a lot of time talking to um, people from IMAX and DTS, as well as studios, as well as our engineers at Sound United that build our beautiful dead end products in order to get you the information that you are asking about. So um, we're going to give it a few seconds to, to, um, um, to allow other people to come and, and join this particular meeting. So I have a list of basically questions, note cards, that you guys have submitted on Facebook that I'm going to go through and try to answer all of them as much as I possibly can. Um, of course, in, in 25 minutes, I can't cover every technical spec that's out there, but if you ever want to know more uh, uh, beyond what we're going to talk about today, there's a great article in the, in the January 2019 um, wide screen review that goes into extreme detail about the differences between IMAX Enhanced, the mixes, how the audio is mixed, the aspect ratios, and things like that. But in 25 minutes, all we can do is basically summarize. All right. So, so let's go and get started and start asking the questions. So the most common question we get is, what is it, why do I want it, and how do I get it? What it is. It is um, IMAX and DTS have joined together to deliver, to try to deliver in your home the IMAX experience that you see in a movie theater. So why do I want it? Well, it's simple. When you go to a movie theater, I went to go see a blockbuster movie a few days ago. And if you go to one of those Edwards 18s, you'll notice that that movie is available in um, IMAX, 3D, Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision, DTS-X, ultra widescreen, all these different aspects, different experiences in each one of those theaters. But when you buy a Blu-ray or when you watch it on Netflix or Amazon, they, only get, they pretty much only give you one experience to choose from. The goal of this is to give you that experience you would get in an IMAX theater, which is different than if you go to a normal theater. Why is that? Well, the screen, the, the screen is bigger. Um, it has a taller aspect ratio. So sometimes they'll show you more um, information on the top and the bottom. Also, the, uh, the, where the speakers are located are different and the sizing is different. So the mix, the audio mix is delivered differently. So it looks different and it actually sounds different. And we'll get into more detail about what the how it what what each one of those things are as we go along so the next question is um what key features does it bring over other formats so the first thing um i'll give you a quick example the speakers in an imax theater are very large and the um and the sound is re uh, is mixed at full dynamic range full impact from quiet to loud very dynamic most um, um, releases that you get at home are near filled. They actually reduce the amount of dynamic range in that signal because your speakers aren't built to this size. So by making some adjustments in the receiver and in the mix, we can give you that full dynamic range, that impact you would get in an IMAX theater in your home. So the sound is different. There is no LFE in a um, IMAX theater, the point one. Um, each channel um, are crossed over at a certain frequency and all that bass is fed to a subwoofer. So, the, so because there is no point one, it is an obviously a different mix than what you normally hear. When it comes to the video side, when you go see an IMAX um, movie and its aspect ratio, which is 1.43 1 to 1 or 1 1.9 to 1, there's more information than what you see on a widescreen release. They don't take the widescreen release and lop off the sides. What they do is if they have the IMAX print, they lop off the top and the bottom. So there's actual information that you will see that you will not see sometimes if the director decides to release that IMAX aspect. That is up to the content creator, but he has that flexibility now when he, when he makes the disc. So if you're watching something and maybe you're looking at Tom Cruise and his head is cut off at the top, at, uh, right above his head, then you'll actually see, a, you may see more above him and below him. You can actually see that in demonstrations if you saw um, something like the Avengers 
Infinity War, and, it, and you're looking at Thanos, on the widescreen release, part of his head was cut off, and then the IMAX release, you could actually see more above him and behind him. So different aspect ratio. The next thing is an IMAX um, theater, the, the screens are absolutely massive. So what film grain, which is pleasant on a normal size screen, becomes, can become distracting on a screen that is massive. So over decades, um, IMAX has developed this technology called DMR. Basically, it's digital noise reduction, the ability to reduce the amount of film grain while still making the image look cinematic. The, this means um, that the picture will look clear. A lot of times when you buy that Blu-ray, it looks great if you have a projector at home. But a lot of times when you throw it on a 4K TV or an 8K TV, th that TV um, sees that film grain as signal and it starts to look like sparkly noise. By reducing the amount of film grain in the, in the image, it will look better on a flat panel because you have less distracting film grain. There'll still be a film grain in it. It'll still look cinematic, but it won't be distracting, especially on a flat panel. So you, may, so you end up with some signals, you'll get more information. Everything, you'll get a clearer picture and you get access to a better mix or a different mix. Which mix is better? The standard DTS X or the, IMA, or the Atmos or the IMAX enhanced mix? That's not for Sal United to decide. We want to give you options. The content creator created three different versions. Our goal is to give you exactly what that content creator wanted you to hear in those different versions. And you, as an enthusiast, can pick the one that you want. Just like we argue over what um, mix of what remastering of the Pink Floyd is better, 1978 or 1994. Now we can argue over which mix sounds better: the IMAX Enhance, the DTSX, or even maybe the um, Dolby Atmos. We want to give you choice, and there should never be anybody that does not want more choice. So a clearer picture, um, a different aspect options and a different audio mix that you can choose from that is closer to what you saw and what you heard in an IMAX theater which with more dynamics. That are the key features over other, other formats. The next one, you know, we already talked about it. How does it affect my viewing experience? You get a different choice. You get to um, have a different experience and you can choose which experience you decide you want to use. And will it be available on all Blu-rays? It will be available, um, the studios will look at and, and determine which pieces they want to release. Not every um, uh, disc will be released in IMAX Enhanced. It's up to the content creator and the studio on what they want to release. Um, for um, several studios, including Sony, have already announced releases of, of, of content. Um, Sony has released, uh, has announced that they're gonna be releasing um, titles such as Jumanji and Spider-Man Homecoming and Venom and a movie called Alpha. So there's already some movies that have already been announced for release. On top of Blu-ray, actually a large majority of what you're gonna be seeing is, is going to be delivered via streaming content. Streaming is easier to distribute. So you'll see a lot of this content coming first on streaming services like Fandango now. So um, the benefit of IMAX Enhance is IMAX Enhanced is um, layered on top of two core um, technologies that are found on 4K HDR material. The first one is, um, it is um, the foundation of the picture is HDR10, which is the format or the foundation or the, the primary specification for HDR, which means the picture is backwards compatible with any 4K HDR or any 4K TV. The next thing is it's also, IMAX and DTS got together to deliver the sound content. So the foundation for the IMAX enhanced mix, it lives on, on a DTS X um, on, on Kodak. So it is backwards compatible with any DTS X um, re, um, receiver or even a DTS um, soundbar. Are you gonna get all the benefits? No, but will you get some of them? Yes, and as you go into DTS uh, IMAX enhanced um, certified products when it comes to the AVR side, the receivers start making adjustments to maximize the performance of that mix that's on that track. Which leads me to the next question, which I hear all the time. Do I need a TV or receiver that is IMAX certified to enjoy the format? And if so, why? You'll notice that there's going to be displays that are IMAX 
certified and there's going to be receivers or AVRs or pre-pros pre, pre and things like that that are IMAX certified. There's two parts to this. When you buy a display, IMAX certification means that the display has been tested to meet the color, clarity, and contrast um, um, uh, requirements that IMAX believes will give you the experience that they believe you should have in your home. So it's more of a certification, a, a, a blessing, a approval that that is going to give you the right experience. Does that mean that if you have a great 4K HDR TV, you will not see the same visual differences? No, it does not. It just means it has not been tested and certified by, by IMAX and DTS. When it comes to an AVR, it's a little different. When you place that disc in, in a, your Blu-ray player, I'm, we have Oppos and Samsungs and Sonys and Panasonics. It'll work in any 4K, um, 4K or UHD Blu-ray player. When I put that in, that mix is available, but you can't, there's some adjustments that need to be made. On a regular Blu-ray, if I put on a regular DTS-X receiver, it'll just play back in DTS-X. If I play, um, stick that disc um, um, in a Blu-ray and I play it back on an IMAX enhanced receiver, like a Denon X4500, you will notice that there is, a, there is a flag on that content. And on the front of the receiver, instead of it saying, like you normally see Atmos or Adobe Surround or DTS-X Master Audio, it will say, IMAX DTSX, and it will make uh, internal adjustments to its levels and its crossover settings and a variety of other um, requirements that DTS has specified to ensure that that mix plays back properly um, in your home and you get the experience that they got when they made the mix for your house. A little later, we will go into the menus and I will show you that when that, um, when that, this is, um, when that flag is triggered, there are a level of hidden menus in the receiver that will pop up and you'll be able to be able to make some slight adjustments. And we'll talk about what those adjustments are as we get more technical a little later. Um, so the next one, so we already talked about um, this. They were saying, do, we, do you need to have a IMAX enhanced certified gear to be able to use the aspect ratio? The aspect ratio is going to live on the disc. That's just the way the disc is recorded. The noise reduction is on the disc. Um, so whether, so long as you have a great display, a high quality display, Samsung, Sony, LG, um, um, even if it may not be certified, if it's, if it's a quality um, disc um, display, you'll still get all of those visual benefits. The receivers, remember, will actually make adjustments based on the signal. So the receivers, there's a difference on the displays. As long as you have a great one, what you see is the same as if it was a certified display. So next, so next question. For someone who designs a high-end home theater for clients, um, would it be true that the, the, would it, with the true benefit and tangible audio and video differences between IMAX enhanced versus other um, uh, displays, other systems, um, would I see a difference compared to a high-end receiver two years ago? Yes, you will. The mix is different. So the effects are going to sound different. The dynamics are different. The picture's going to look different. So yes, you will see a difference even if you compare it to a very nice system two years ago. Which one is better? It's whatever your client or whatever you believe as a customer is better. We just want to deliver it and you now you have the option of choosing the one that you want. You may want that extra film grain um, and you may not like DMR, but most people have seen it actually like it a lot, but that's your option on which disc you decide to purchase. So whether it's an IMAX enhanced disc or a standard DTSX or at most um, enabled um, 4K Blu-ray. The next one we get asked about, one of the specs, if you look on the back of this, um, this is one of the first 4K Blu-ray discs that came out that has IMAX enhanced on. You'll see it says IMAX enhanced across the front. Has, um, it says it, it also is HDR10+. Plus. And people are concerned, will HDR10+, plus be part of the IMAX enhanced standard? And, um, and, uh, but will I still be able to enjoy the picture even if my display is not HDR10+. Plus? So the best way to think of it, IMAX enhanced, the audio side is an enhanced version of DTSX with a different audio mix. 
HDR10 Plus is just an enhanced version of HDR10. So HDR10, um, it, because it's the foundation, plays back on any 4K HDR TV. HDR10 Plus just adds what's called dynamic metadata, frame by frame or scene by scene information the TV uses to tone map to make sure that the information in bright areas are not clipped off when you're playing uh, or, or blown out when you're playing the video. Many high-end TVs do not need um, dynamic metadata provided by the disc. They can measure it frame by frame by frame. LGs and Sonys can actually do that, which is why the first IMAX enhanced certified TVs do not have HDR10+. If your TV can use HDR10+, great, but it does not mean you, can't, you cannot not experience the picture quality on a non-HDR10 Plus TV, a standard HDR10 TV, such as the Sonys, which are the first ones to be certified, or even a Sony projector. So it's, a, it's an optional enhancement. So HDR10 Plus is an optional enhancement to IMAX Enhance. It is not a requirement. Um, how is this any different than THX certification? So THX certification was designed because George Lucas went to movie theaters and what he was seeing in the theater didn't truly match the experience that he saw in his mixing studios. So he came up with a list of parameters and specifications to ensure that the experience at home and in a movie theater met, was identical to what he mixed in his, in his theater. That is a great thing. The difference between THX certification and um, IMAX enhanced is IMAX Enhanced does have a certification. A TV or display and a receiver must meet a level of um, specification. So for example, a TV has to have a certain um, dynamic range, um, a brightness, um, color capability, clarity, okay? A receiver has to play a certain level and have a certain amount of settings on it. However, um, it, it goes beyond that. The next thing is like we talked about, the picture is different. The mix, what they put on the disc is different. And, and what the audio track they use, the mix on the audio track is different. So yes, it's um, IMAX enhances the certification, but it's also a new, a new content. So it's a certification and a new version of content. The next thing is, if you have a AVR, um, the receiver, when it senses that flag in the content, will make modifications to its um, settings based on um, the requirements from IMAX and the baselines you have set when you set up your receiver or your pre-pro using Odyssey. So it's a certification, it's a, it's a new version of content, and it's a modification that is done whenever that signal is sensed on the receiver. So doing multiple things. So can you go over what the consumer needs to do to experience an IMAX Enhanced um, 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 on, on an I so IMAX Enhanced? Do I just need to buy the disc with, um, with the format on it, you know, and stick it, and will the AVR adjust? Yes, the nice thing about it, what you would do is you would take something like our Denon, you would go in, you would do all of your Odyssey and all of your adjustments that you would normally do, set your speakers up for DTSX and Dolby Atmos. The second the receiver um, recognizes the flag in the content, the receiver's settings will change and make adjustments in the AVR. So let me show you what I mean by that. I think we have an AVR, a receiver behind me. If, you're, if you play the movie and you hit the options menu on your Blu-ray, it will just say DTSX. So it's not gonna say on the Blu-ray option that your Blu-ray player is outputting the flag for IMAX Enhance. But if I go into the receiver and I hit the info button, you, you will see that the signal being fed now says DTSX and it's being outputted as DTSX. If I go into the movie settings, there's a little button that says movie where you can pick different, you can pick different, um, different movie settings like uh, stereo and five channel stereo and RL 3D. You notice that the second that disc comes in, you get the option to select IMAX DTSX. So that setting is not visible unless there is a disc in the player. Some other things. So, so, so say I go in here and I pick this DTSX here. Um, there is going to be additional menu settings in the TV. So if I go uh, in the receiver. So if I go into setup 
and I go to audio and I go down to surround parameters, you'll notice that there's actually adjustments for IMAX there. Auto means whenever you see that um, IMAX enhanced flag, you make the adjustments uh, in the receiver to uh, make it that IMAX has recommended. If you don't like it, you can set it to off. And what that'll do is it's played back as if it was a standard DTSX disc. The next thing is you see here it says auto settings, audio settings. One of the things that it does is what's called bass management. So auto means that every single speaker, regardless of how large, you go into your, like in my house, I have a, um, a large speakers all the way around. So all my speakers set to large and I have an LFE. So my subwoofer only fires up for the point one, but all the bass for all the other channels are fed to the main speakers. Because IMAX is more dynamic, you can actually blow a speaker up trying to do that. So what, uh, and they were concerned about that and they weren't concerned, they, weren't, they were concerned that many people's speakers cannot handle the dynamic range. So what they do is in an IMAX theater, there is no LFE. Every channel is crossed over at, if I go hit a manual, 70 hertz. And everything below 70 is sent to the subwoofer for all of the channels. But my concern was, well, what happens if I have a set of really nice speakers, like Sound United makes these big BP9080 towers that are full range, um, and I want bass coming, and, I, and they can play bass. So now I have the option of going in and saying, I want to play my, my, my main speakers a little lower, and I, wanna, and I wanna start my subwoofer a little higher, I can make adjustments. The reason why they did this is iMac stuff, if you wanna get technical, has a much steeper crossover between the bass and the highs. It's called a fourth order, a 24 dB. The crossovers in a receiver are only 12 dB. So what happens is when it senses the uh, iMac signal, it puts a 12 dB on the subwoofer and a 12 dB crossover on the, uh, on the main speakers and you end up 12 and 12 equals 24. That's one way that they can get the crossover settings. All this stuff is only necessary for IMAX content. You don't need a 24 dB crossover in standard content. It wasn't mixed for that, which is why those things are on, that I showed you before are only visible in the IMAX settings. It also will do things like turn up, um, there'll, be there'll be changes to the volume and things like that for the surrounds to get you the experience they wanted. The second I hit stop, and I put a regular disc back in, it'll, it'll default back to your regular um, Odyssey or setup settings. So the receiver does everything for you internally. So do you need to change the position of the speakers? No, set up your system like you would normally do. 5.1.4, 7.1.4, how you normally set up your stuff. And if you do that, um, whenever it senses the signal, the, the receiver will make the adjustments based on the parameters that are required, okay? How do I set the, the high pass and low pass? I recommend you leave Minato unless you know you're, um, you, can, you can play with this manual, but if you leave it in auto, it sounds spectacular. No one when we do these demos ever complain about how the base management is done in IMAX. Um, the hardware and software requirements, we already talked about it. Great 4K HDR TV. If you want to make sure that the picture is going to be exactly what they've told you that it should look like, get an IMAX and, um, certified TV. Um, if you want the re receiver and you want to get the, the, uh, the, re the receiver to adjust to the proper parameters, make sure that you um, get a, an IMAX certified receiver like a Denon um, X4500 to ensure that when it sees the mix, it makes those final adjustments to give you the maximum impact. And the last thing that they ask is, what about content? There are going to be movies coming. Like I said, there's two movies that are out right now. A um, Journey to the South Pacific and A Beautiful Planet were the first of the IMAX release stuff. And there's going to be new movies coming. You'll see it on Fandango now. We are working on a little um, giveaway for people who have, and, and we're going to probably be giving away 15 um, uh, uh, of, the, of these demo discs, this one right here, to people who have attended this um, Facebook Live. So I hope I answered as many of, your, um, of the questions you had as possible, and I will talk to you soon.